Hello, it's Sarah, and I'm late. It's, I think, August 5th, um, 6th, OMG. This is the July art journal page. I, the end of July snuck up on me, and I got so um, into doing my, my Mixed Media Mondays live um, I forgot about it, so we're going to do this real quick. I decided to try, inspired by the, um, the mixed media journal I just got by Dina Wakely. She has craft paper in there. This is just a piece of plain old craft paper, craft um, cardstock I should say, and I'm coating it with clear gesso. Now gesso is a good... Um, it gives a little tooth. It's not a smooth, smooth surface, um, but it also will seal the paper so that it, it becomes a place where I, we can put color down. And I think I'm gonna do um, kinda like, I'm just gonna let that dry. And I've cut it down to nine by six I believe because we've just been cutting for this little art journal here's January February and then I did a Valentine's page March well that's a thick one because that was uh, all collage April May and that where's June Oh no, please don't tell me I didn't do June either. Here's June <laughs> and June. So for July, I'm thinking I'm just going to try something like this. So it's not really as entangled, but it's it's just something quick. I really, no not that. I really wanted to do uh, something quick, so I think I'm just going to do that in black and white. And something like this. So I just want to use the craft card stock as a background. And I think we're going to do the main lines in white. Now I think I'm going to go more toward this. And just see what it looks like. So we'll color some stuff in. And, and just see what it looks like. And I'm hoping for the best. But I want to get it done quickly-ish. Um, you know, get it out there for you guys, and uh, that way, tomorrow, we're going to do Mixed Media Monday. Again, I'm going to go live 1 o'clock Eastern Time, and I've got, um, I just got Dina's book, Art Journal Courage. I've been reading that. I'm up to... Um, Let's see, drawing faces, so maybe we'll do a face tomorrow. And it's just based on a formula that um, everybody uses because I learned it in, um, not Wonderlust, what I did last year, Life Book. Um, and this book is wonderful so far. I am up to, but it's, it's all about like courage to try new techniques when Dina says this constantly in her videos too. Um, she even said it, I can't draw, and then she, finally she thought, why can't I, you know, um, and she tried it, and so she does, and the other thing, like, I hate my handwriting, well, change it, you know, make it artsy, um, and this is Dina's style, don't get me wrong, I can't create this way, this is not how my brain works, this is how her, her art journals turn out, but I just like what she's teaching, I like the philosophies, I like, you know, a lot, like, I mean, just let it be, let the color be brave, you know, so that's what I like about this, um, <clears throat> she had a book before this, too, I think it was called, the other one was called Art Journal Freedom, and this one's called Art Journal Courage, so I got that, I got a few of her products, I got some paint, I'm just letting my just so dry my toes. So I got a few colors of her heavy body acrylics because I don't have any heavy body acrylic. Um, and um, so we're going to play with those tomorrow. I got some tags. So now I have these tags and 
craft tags, which are here somewhere. Um, a couple of stencils. I got a mask. Um, I got her ink pad, which is four colors of archival, and they're basically the same colors of paint. Although, <clears throat> did I get night? I got lapis. Eh, so they're a little off. The turquoise, so it's orange, tan, oh, ocean, tangerine, ruby, and night. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I got a couple of stamp sets. The critters, I love the critters. So I haven't played with these yet. So I just thought we'd maybe create tomorrow using um, some of Dina's techniques. And, I mean, I'm going to keep it Sarah style for the most part, obviously. But I like to try new things and also push myself to do things that um, maybe I, um, I wouldn't otherwise. So that's what I'm planning to do tomorrow. So this, and this is cardstock, guys, so it's not going to be as uh, sturdy as this watercolor paper. If you want to, you could glue this onto a piece of that to keep it, to make it be the same. I think I'm going to do that. I'll just take a piece. I have lots of um, ones that I've played with before that maybe I'll just, I will glue this onto here just to get it sturdy um, afterwards. So I'm going to go away and get this real dry and then we're just going to make some lines. No big deal. I'll be back. Okay, it is dry and I'm finding that if I don't put something here, <laughs> the camera won't focus because it seems like the color, well, it just wasn't. But anywho, I am going to use my Posca paint pens and you know why? Because I have them. Um, I originally did this with paint and you can absolutely do it with paint. You can use your Sharpies. You can use whatever you want, but Posca paint pens are a really great tool. Um, I got these on Amazon, and they're really, really nice. They're good. I'm going to use the thickest uh, nib right now. I have them in the three different sizes. I have them in thick, medium, and the fine point. And what we're going to do first is just establish... A pattern so I'm gonna start on this side and actually I think I'm gonna do it um, vertical so let me go up a little bit because and you know what it doesn't matter ha huh. because my art journal the art journal that I'm creating for this this is uh, our monthly art journal everything's been you know what not everything actually I think I did go most of them are, yeah, this is the, I did go horizontal, so I, it doesn't matter. Do whatever you feel, but especially for this, you don't have to worry about it. And I'm just going to start making a pattern. And I'm going to, you don't have to be like, so I start right there. So let's start over here too. Just make an oval little shape. And we're going to do one on the corner. All right, so you have, these are your three jumping off points, right? So for here, I'm going to start small and go wide. So I'm going to go all the way over to here. And then for this one, I'm going to start small and go wide over to here. And one more. And I think because of the tooth of the gesso, the paint is kind of skipping, so I'm just going back over the lines, because the, po the point of this is you want these lines nice and thick, so paint may be, may be your better way to go. Um, but I am going to continue with this. I'm just going to go slow and give some pressure, and you just want to continue And this does not have to be um, perfect, like straight lines or anything. They can be thick to thin. So I'm going to go thick to thin again, or thin to thick. See that? And then maybe we'll do one that way. And...
let's do And you can make the line thicker. That's okay because we can put white dots on that eventually. When we when we start playing with the white. <clears throat> Cuz this is going to be black and white, but I might put a little color in here. I it's hard for me to stay away from color. Um so let's see. I'm going to go I just want to start bumping into the other sides and they're not bumping yet here we go now I'm bumping let's go this way well no wait They have something like this and I think the paint um, a paint on a brush would probably come out way more striking but this is basically it you're not it's not anything big right but then we're gonna start adding um, different maybe like kind of like Zentangle patterns different doodles <clears throat> I'm just darkening the lines where it could be darker. I like a very nice dark black line that I like that better. Um, so let's go with right here we're gonna just start on this side and just make a black line right there and Let's do I don't know. I'm, I'm just going with it. I'm not thinking. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm in a zone here. That's what happens to me. So I'm just kind of going to make random patterns. Like wherever, let me see if there's a thickish one because I want to do something like right here. This kind of seems like a big, right here, this one. I'm going to do um, a bigger triangle and I'm going to put a triangle in the triangle like maybe I'll use a thinner pen but you know what I can do Maybe I should take it down to my medium size right now because this was really just to make these lines nice and dark. I 
I think, I forget who I got this idea from on YouTube, but I think she uses a um, oil-based Sharpie. And I don't, I think I might have one oil-based Sharpie, but I got all, I can't find it. I think I have a white oil-based Sharpie, but I don't think I ever got into the oil-based ones. Um, I just started get, or I think I might, I have like a regular Sharpie like this, which this makes nice thick dark lines. Um, anywho, uh, yeah, just use what you have because this Posca paint pen on the um, gesso, I'm finding I have to go back over and because the gesso has tooth to it, so it's a little bit... Um, I'm just going to make this a little more even. And then I'll probably put some white dots in there. Um, what else do I want to do? Let's go with... See this? You can, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's... The lines aren't solid. They're very... Uh, they skipped... It skipped over the gesso so it's not as solid as I like it um, let's do this one like a pinwheel and let's do I want to do like a maybe I shouldn't do that we'll see I'll do so I'm basically just repeating the same patterns. Um, I mean, you could do circles. There's nothing saying you can't do circles, right? And then the idea is, I'm going to take, maybe I'll try my fine point, oh, maybe I'll do the medium first. Um, white. And like just go oh boy <laughs> I think I got a little too much paint there but because there's gesso on the surface even though it's paper I can clean it up but that's a mistake you don't want that to happen I have more control with a brush in that case but yeah this is a nice line I just really wanted to experiment with the craft paper because it's in Dina's um, art journal. Yeah, that looks cool. And like, I just wanted to see. And then when I Googled it and when I looked for um, projects using craft paper, people draw on it, like sketch. They do faces and stuff. There's actually a sketchbook. I don't think they call it craft necessarily, but it's like this color. And um, it's cool. It's nice to try different substrates. And so that's what I wanted to do today. And I was trying to make it something quick that we could get done because I'm behind. So this is what we're going for here. Um, let me just make some dots in the center of this one. Oops. And this does stay wet for a minute, so just be careful. It acts <clears throat> very much like paint. So that's basically it. All I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to stick with the um, kind of straight lines. I mean, there's curves in there, so why couldn't we add curves? You know, um, this is just the next size uh, black. I'm going to go...
I really don't think you can go wrong but what about color I think the pink I'll tell you what colors I think would look so good on this is this pink and this blue so I'm really super tempted to use those like maybe I should just make a row of flowers I think I should I'm gonna do them in black I'm gonna make just little five petal flowers try and use the whole space of the row here so this one's going to be a little smaller it's hard for me to go small I usually say this one's did it and then I'll do a row right over here but wait, I'll do that in a minute. Let's see. I'm going to do I'm going to do pink. Look, let's see what the pink looks like on the craft. OMG, I knew it. Oh, it's so gorgeous. Uh oh, it's mixing with the black a little bit. So you should make sure that your black is dry. But it is pretty. I'm a sloppy colorer. Wow. I'm going to let that dry because I will peel the paper. So that looks pretty. Oh boy. Okay. So I'm going to go off camera and do some more. And then I'll come back and I'll share and, um, tell you if I had any um, issues or anything but like see some of the I'm gonna go over some of the black and just fill in and make sure like here watch I'm gonna do all right fine I can't stop I'm gonna do a little white opposite here so right here now see I shouldn't uh, right here and you know what? I can even go smaller. I have a smaller nib on a white pen, and that might have looked better. But like I said, use what you have. And I'm really not thinking. That's the whole point of this. I just want to be in a zone free from stress, free from anything, and just Focus on what you're doing, making lines. It's so relaxing. This is very relaxing. And see, we're getting somewhere now. It's starting to look cool. I think I'm going to make white centers of my flowers. All right, so I'll be back in a minute, and I'll have some more done, and I'll show you. All right, I'm getting there. I'm not done, but I wanted to sh point out a few things. Um, because of the gesso, especially my fine point markers are skipping and they're splashing, which is fine. I'm not a perfectionist in any way, shape, or form. And if you look at this from a distance, it looks gorgeous. The other thing is my really thick, thick white one kind of overlapped the lines a little bit, like over here. You can see these little round finishing points. So I'm just coming back and also I have I'm getting paint on my hand somewhere cuz I am not I'm impatient. So I'm just putting a paper towel down on my surface so that I don't smudge all the work I've done. But yeah, you can kind of fill in and fix anything that you don't like. See like I got white on my black here because I smudged all those dots. I didn't mean to. Um, and there's some white on the background. That's okay. Like on the actual craft color. Uh, stuff like that. 
I didn't go back in with um, more color. I think the pink is just plenty. And you can you can play around and do like see here. I don't like how the white kind of came over the line of the black in some of these plates, like right here. You can see it really, so I'm just going to straighten that black line out. And I think it just makes it look sharper. But it's not totally necessary. You don't have to. Just let the lines be there if that's what you want to do. But you can come back and, you know, like this, this I did with the really, the thickest white. And so it was just full of paint. It had a lot of paint. So I'm just coming back. And I mean, that's a look, having those rounded edges, if you like it that way. That's fine. But I want to make it a little more, oops. <laughs> like keep that in the contained. I want to keep the white contained in that between the lines way. I don't know if I'm even making sense, but what else was I going to tell you? You can make such fine lines with that tiny Sharpie. I mean, Sharpie. This, this fine point Posca pen, the 3.24. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. It's point 0.7 is the nib size on that. I don't know what the other numbers mean. But man, like right here, I made such, for the flowers, they are so little, and I love it. I love how that turned out. Um, I just think we had to um, gesso it. I don't think it would have turned out the same. I think the paint would have just absorbed into the paper and it would have been harder to get it opaque but because we gessoed behind it it looks nice and dark so I have a few more things I want to do I'm just going to show you here with this this is the finest point it's a uh, 0.7 it says that on the packaging I'm going to do these um, triangles I'm gonna do uh, cuz I don't see how thick this line is I'm gonna show you how thin this line is now you don't want to push too hard because it spatters but we're just gonna do you know what I want to do first though I want to make a little I'll do it with this fine point black I just want to go in and make another triangle but I'm not pushing my hardest because if you do, it spatters. So just gently. And I go big and small depending on the size of the triangle. And let's do... I think I'm going to... I want to go white up here. So we're going to gently, following the, um, the white tends to spatter more. And I'm really trying to keep it not, I'm trying to keep it off the black line so I don't have to go back and do it again, do the black lines because I went over them. But you can see that spatter, it just spattered. I'm trying to be gentle. I do like the black and white on this um, craft color um, paper. I, and that's the thing. I'm just kind of trying to figure out where I want to go in the art journal when we do Mixed Media Mondays with the craft paper that's in there. Like I said, I think this blue and this pink would pop so great on the craft. So maybe we'll just play with paint. I got Dina's fuchsia. I got this green OMG. I think these two would pop so well on, on this craft color. So we may just do a craft page in those colors. Drippage and all that stuff. So yeah, 
there that's it guys I just wanted to do a quick and easy no-brainer kind of as entangly piece right is that what you would say about this um, let's do a little I kind of want to fill this in with black I'm going to use the medium I think I want to fill this in oops my paper's a little curved and it made me I like having the dark darks and the light lights, so having a, a dark triangle like that, I like it. So I, because I did these, 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 um, and then I just put dots in some of them. Like here's dots, but look, I got my hand in it, so I'm just going to fix it up again. Um, so I'm pretty much done. I'll post a pic of this on my Facebook page. I want to do something in here. I think... This is the medium size. I'll do that. So I think I've got something in every row now. And then nothing's stopping you from going back and like, see, I like how I outlined the line with the thin, um, it was a thick black line, so I used my thin marker to outline that. Like, see, look, I'll use this, this very thin, thinnest point, and I'll just put a line on the outside of these triangles. I like using the different thicknesses working on this page I'm able to get different effects like I tried to go three thick dots three medium dots and then filled it in with the fine dots to kinda make it look gradual so it's fun just playing with the different nib sizes cuz I have them guys I mean you could, and I originally did it, see this is what I'm kind of using as a reference. I had this whole piece of, this is probably um, mixed media paper or watercolor paper. And I can't think of who it is on, the, on YouTube. But she kind of does a wet on wet blending technique with different colors of blues and greens. So that's what's in the background. So first you cover the paper with that, and then you add the dark lines to it, and it just pops, right? So I thought, well, why couldn't we do that with the craft? And it definitely looks flatter. And the pink is almost looking a little bit purple on here because of the craft coming through, you know? Um, but I just wanted to do something quick, so I like it. And I think I'll still go around and do a couple more things. What else did I want to do? Uh, something over here. I think I'll add some white, thin white lines. So I'll post a pic of this on my Facebook page. And then I uh, start thinking about August. I want to do an August page. If you guys have suggestions, put that in the comments. And if there's something, because we're, I mean, look, we're halfway through the year, right? So if you guys have something you want to work on or try, uh, I'd be willing to give it a shot. So let's, you know, give me some ideas. And that's what I'll do for my August page. All right, you guys? So that's it. I got to put. Um, I'll probably just put it on the back uh, July this is July so it can go e either way but I like that we add that little pop of pink in there so have fun and as always thank you so much for watching